two Zach speed so it is either Brundle or Danner I think it was Martin Brundle well there is the answer there is Jonathan Palmer whose race was a very short one indeed PK leading and the Benetton Ford up into second position and a black flag is being waved now we'll see them come down and the race is being started and there is the reason Jonathan Palmer's Tyrrell is in a dangerous position, that is Pier Carlo Ginzani, the unfortunate Italian who for one reason or another never seems to finish a Grand Prix. So here is the replay, let's look and see if we can sort out what happened. There, Martin Brundle's losing control and going straight into the Armco on the left. And behind him, you can see Arnu is swerving, he hits Nannini, and, and there is Philippe Streff, that flash from the engine means he's in trouble, he swerves and he's hit by Jonathan Palmer and both the Tyrrells are badly damaged. And as they form up for the restart of the Austrian Grand Prix after that multiple crash earlier on, amazingly it looks as though all 26 competitors are restarting, although several of them of course will be in their spare cars. 52 laps and PK scorches away. Vansel is left and he's left very badly indeed. Look how he's being passed and there's another coming together. A car dragging along the arm code. Two, three of them out and one of them is Stefan Johansson and there's a Ferrari down there and they're all over the circuit. This is far worse than the first one. Streff is in trouble again. Barbara is in trouble again. Alio has stopped. There's at least six cars. Jonathan Palmer has stopped, but his car looks perfectly okay. Christian Danner has stopped. Well, this has to be some sort of condemnation, I think, of the Austrian circuit here. Is it wide enough? This is the second time it's happened. Here, then, is the second start. Now, watch. There's Nigel Mansell's car, which is dragging along, and you see the others charging up to him now you see Eddie Cheever coming up alongside and there is the Brabham of De Cesare is turning into him Johansson goes into Cheever's arrows and the rest just pile up solidly behind now you see Capelli in trouble again he goes sideways on the circuit and Philly and Pascal Fabra's car leaps arch and that goes into the this incredible picture shows in the foreground in the blue helmet Philippe Streff and in the Charo car, which is the AGS, F uh, Pascal Fabra has leapt over the top of Philippe Alio's Lola, and you can see Lola, uh, Alio getting out of the cockpit, and on the right in the turquoise colored car is Ivan Capelli. For the third time, off come the tire warmers from Thierry Bootsen's Benetton in fourth position on the grid as he, like everybody else, hopes that the Austrian Grand Prix will at last be getting underway nearly one and a half hours after it was supposed to. Two men will not be starting, Alex Caffey and Philippe Streff. And quite a lot of people will be starting from the pit lane, including world champion Alain Prost and Ferrari's Michele Alboreto. It's a long drag. They've got their clutches out. It's much too long, but they get away. PK is good. Berger is ahead of Mansell. Boots is ahead of Mansell. And Senna is left on the line. Senna came out in the spare car and he had clutch problems and he's left badly. But now we've actually got a start for the Austrian Grand Prix. PK, Bootsen, then the rest. have got away PK leading round the long right hander up to the fastest part of the course 215 miles an hour is the speed that they go down to the Bosch curve in and there is the leader it's PK Lutzen Berger Mansell and Farby coming up to take Mansell 
and once again Mansell appeared to have clutch trouble at the start but uh, I'm sure he was looking after it very carefully he didn't lose too much time he couldn't get the car away very quickly but uh, he held on to his place didn't go down nearly as badly as he did uh, at the last start and now they're into the Texaco bends, coming up to the crest, which is where Stefan Johansson hit the deer at 170 miles an hour. Practice it, Pique, Bootson, Berger, Mansell, Farby, and then Patrese, Warwick, and Johansson. And they're coming up to the completion now of the first lap, and we'll spot where Alain Prost is in comparison with the people in front of him as Pique comes through. And it's Pique, Bootson, Berger, Mansell, Farby, then a gap, Patrese goes through, followed by Warwick, then it's De Cesaris, then Johansson, then Nakajima, now a long, long gap before Campo, Arnu, Ginzani, Alio, Jonathan Palmer, and Alain Prost is ahead of Senna. As Bootson in the Benetton on lap two in this 52 lap race, who told me before this race began, a long, long time ago this was, that he was very confident about his chances. He's got the V6 turbo Ford engine and he's in second place and challenging DK for the lead. But with Senna and Frost relegated to the back of the field with various troubles, the, uh, Frost before the start, we saw him being pushed away, his car didn't get away properly on the warm-up lap, had to start from the pit road, Senna had what probably clutch trouble because remember these clutches aren't really designed to do three starts and uh, they're pretty fragile well they're not that fragile but when they're taking uh, 800 horsepower through them and Nelson Piquet coming up already to lap somebody on the fourth lap who is coming in and it's Stefan Johansson